Hundreds of books have been written about the history of nuclear confrontation between the superpowers and the design of the first nuclear bombs. But there are many myths about modern nuclear weapons. Therefore, I suggest you to make it clear and tell us how the most destructive weapon invented by man works. To see a thermonuclear bomb explode, all you have to do is lift your head and look at the sun in its core. As in other stars, hydrogen fusion is taking place, releasing tremendous energy. You're looking at a huge hydrogen bomb that has been exploding continuously in space for billions of years. But back on Earth, atomic weapons are one of the most amazing, mysterious, and frightening processes, the principle of which is based on a chain reaction. The nuclei of some isotopes of radioactive elements, such as plutonium, Californium and uranium are able to decay while capturing a neutron. This is followed by the emission of two or three more neutrons. The disintegration of the nucleus of one atom under ideal conditions can lead to the disintegration of two or three more, which in turn can trigger other atoms. Thus, there is an avalanche like process of destruction of more and more nuclei, with the release of gigantic amounts of energy, breaking atomic bonds. In an explosion, enormous amounts of energy are released in a super, small amount of time. It happens at a single point. That's why the explosion of an atomic bomb is always powerful and destructive. Very soon, a fireball will be formed, the temperature in which will be on the order of tens of millions of degrees. It would seem that even soft, but moving at the speed of light radiation, should leave far behind the substance that generated it. But it is not so. In cold air, the run of quanta is centimeters, and they move not in a straight line, and changing the direction of motion at each interaction of motion at each interaction. The quanta ionize the air, spreading in it like cherry juice poured into a glass of water. This phenomenon is called radiative diffusion. The ball devours the space, and ionized air behind its front almost does not move. Radiation cannot transfer to it, a significant impulse at diffusion, but it pumps enormous energy into this air, heating it. And when the energy of radiation runs out, the balloon begins to grow due to the expansion of hot plasma, which is gutted from within by what used to be a charge. Expanding like an inflated bubble, the plasma shell thins. Unlike a bubble, of course, nothing inflates it. There is almost no substance left on the inside, but 30 microseconds after the explosion, the speed of this flight is more than 100 kilometers per second, and the hydrodynamic pressure in the substance is more than 150,000 atmospheres. When the shock wave detaches from the fireball, the characteristics of the emitting layer change and the power of radiation in the optical part of the spectrum increases sharply. The so-called first maximum further processes of illumination and change of transparency of the surrounding air compete, which leads to realization of the second maximum, less powerful but much longer. Near the explosion, everything around vaporizes farther away melts, but even farther away, where the heat flux is already insufficient for the melting of solid bodies. The ground rocks and houses flow like a liquid under the monstrous destroying all the strength bonds of the pressure of gas, glowing to a glow unbearable for the eyes. Finally, the shock wave travels far away from the point of explosion, where there remains a loose and weakened but expanded many times, the cloud of vapors turned into a tiny and very radioactive dust of vapors of that which has been the plasma charge, and that in its terrible hour was close to them, place from which it should have been kept as far away as possible. The cloud begins to rise upward. It cools down, changing its color, puts on a white cap of condensed moisture, dust from the surface of the earth, follows it, forming a stalk of what is commonly called an atomic mushroom. The resulting infernal blast wave instantly kills all life in its path. And yet, it is possible to survive 
Being at a distance of three kilometers from the epicenter of the explosion, the average strength of the atomic bomb, of course, if you are lucky enough to find a suitable shelter, as computer modeling has shown, there would indeed be survivors in the surrounding areas after a nuclear bomb explodes in a large modern city. From the initial flashover, they would have only five, ten seconds to get to safety. The fact of the confined space is extremely important because following the fireball, the blast wave would be deadlier than the explosion itself. Finally, the shock wave travels far away from the point of explosion where there remains a loose and weakened but expanded many times. The cloud of vapors turned into a tiny and very radioactive dust of vapors of that which has been the plasma charge and that in its terrible hour was close to the place from which it should have been kept as far away as possible. The cloud begins to rise upward. It cools down, changing its color, puts on a white cap of condensed moisture. Dust from the surface of the earth follows it, forming a stalk of what is commonly called an atomic mushroom. The resulting infernal blast wave instantly kills all life in its path. And yet, it is possible to survive. Being at a distance of three kilometers from the epicenter of the explosion, the average strength of the atomic bomb, of course, if you are lucky enough to find a suitable shelter. As computer modeling has shown, there would indeed be survivors in the surrounding areas after a nuclear bomb explodes in a large modern city. From the initial flashover, they would have only five, ten seconds to get to safety. The fact of the confined space is extremely important because following the fireball, the blast wave would be deadlier than the explosion itself. As is well known, atomic and nuclear weapons are the most destructive weapons ever created by man. The most powerful bomb in the history of mankind at the moment was created and tested in practice in the Soviet Union, and it was called the Tsar Bomba. The power of the bomb and 10 equivalent was almost 60 megatons, but later, the creators of the bomb admitted that they planned to create it with a capacity to create it with a capacity of 100 megatons. To this day, the Tsar Bomba remains the most powerful bomb in the world. The bomb was tested in October 1961 in the air over New Earth at a distance of 4,000 kilometers. At that time, none of the airplanes in the world could not cope with the delivery of the bomb to the right place so a special 295 V airplane was created for the test. At the explosion, the diameter of the fire cloud or ball was almost 10 kilometers. The impact of the blast wave could be felt by almost everyone in the world because the seismic wave managed to circle the earth three times in a row. The explosion left no stone unturned. The consequences were horrifying. The surface of the island where the explosion occurred became completely smooth, like a frozen lake. A village 400 kilometers away from the explosion was also affected. All wooden buildings were destroyed, and every stone house was left without a roof. It was this test that prompted most countries in the world to sign a treaty to stop testing nuclear weapons on land, underwater, in the atmosphere, and even in space. Also, as a result of the treaty, came clauses to limit the power of the nuclear weapons that were created. 110 countries signed the treaty. Nevertheless, in just a few decades, nuclear technology has undergone a significant development. Different types of bombs have appeared, such as bacterial, hydrogen vacuum, thermonuclear, and many others. Different types of such weapons make it possible both to solve large-scale, strategic tasks, and to work point blank on individual objects with the help of tactical nuclear weapons while possessing much greater specific destructive power than in the last century. For example, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 weighed about four and a half tons. Today, however, nuclear weapons have become more compact with a nuclear bomb typically weighing only a few hundred kilograms, but it has the potential to kill millions of people at once. It so happens that despite the progress in reducing the arsenals of nuclear weapons since the Cold War, the world's total stockpile of nuclear warheads remains at a very high level. 
Today, about 13,000 nuclear warheads of all stripes is on alert. At the same time, people continue to invent more and more instruments of mass destruction.